on this particular video, I wanted to go ahead and discuss uh, one of my biggest takeaways from Dr. Kevin B. Skinner's book, Treating Pornography Addiction. I read this book some time ago, and as you can see, I've folded a lot of different pages on there because there's a lot of stuff that kind of resonated with me with this particular book that I wanted to share one of the things that really resonated with me. I do suffer from a porn and sex addiction. For the person maybe who doesn't know what a porn or sex addiction is, let's say sex addiction. When I first heard that, it's something that I thought, oh, this person must be, be a nymphomaniac. Like, you just have to have sex all the time. It's not so much that. It's more of a using sex and pornography to cope, numb, and escape from feelings of frustration, of anger, of boredom, isolation, loneliness, sadness. I wanted to read this one part for you, like I said, that really resonated with me in terms of the same line of things that I just told you right now. And this is on page 115 of the book. Is this one particular part called Ignoring Emotional Issues. And I'm going to get to like the middle of this particular page here. When emotions are not dealt with in an appropriate ways, relapse is the likely outcome. Some of the common emotions that lead to relapse include curiosity, need for excitement, frustration slash stress, irritation, anger, boredom, pain, loneliness, worry, and fear. Far too often, people live in a state of emotional numbness. This comes from a lack of knowing how to resolve problems. When we do not know how to solve something, our mind wants to take us to a place of safety. But when we are in this mindset, we simply survive rather than thrive. I can definitely relate to that because... Uh, I even do this with food sometimes when I'm feeling bored or isolated. You just kind of, uh, or like I said, maybe uh, it's like a rejection or something that happened that has gotten you really upset. You argued with a family member or a really good friend. So, and it could just lead to like, I just want to like not think about this. And sometimes there's even other addictions that come from the same kind of realm of like coping, numbing and escaping these emotions like like a drug addiction or even alcohol, right? Uh, how is it that I've learned to deal with this over time? And this is something I'm still going through. This is not something that I'm completely out of the woods yet. I'm starting to, but not completely out of the woods yet. But how is it that I'm dealing with it, this? Definitely when I'm feeling isolated or I'm feeling lonely, I reach out to friends. I call friends. Uh, I try to find other like-minded people that are maybe going through something similar to what I'm going through. And, uh, you know, you can message me. I can tell you, like, maybe some of the ways that I go about doing that. But just basically connecting with friends and family and folks that are going through something similar greatly help. And also what I've noticed, and, and this all falls under the umbrella of self-care, right? And I heard this on the Porn Reboot podcast, J.K. Amazie. He has his uh, Porn Reboot YouTube channel. I highly recommend it. He talks about a lot of great stuff on there, definitely. And uh, I've learned so much from... I would listen more to his podcast and watch the YouTube channel. It's just easier to consume for me. I'm more of a podcast guy than a video guy. But I really recommend it. But what are the concepts that he introduced on his podcast that really resonated with me was lack of self-care when there's not when there's a lack of self-care you it's easier to kind of slip into like watching porn or overeating or like I said a drug addiction or even alcohol addiction and lack of self-care is to say are you exercising enough are you getting enough sleep uh are you eating healthy and not just eating a bunch of garbage and I would even throw into that, like, are you connecting with friends and family? Are you just getting outside, moving your body? Uh, so kind of like these basics of that will put you in a good place uh, to go ahead and just kind of like, I feel good. I'm doing good things for myself. And when that's happening, then it's less likely that one's going to relapse. So another big one that I've learned over time, and this is just like for me listening to all kinds of self-help stuff, but it really rings true, is when I keep my words to myself. Now, of course, we can keep our words to ourselves all the time, but if we can keep the word to ourselves most of the time, like I'm going to say what I'm going to do, and I'm not talking about like some crazy goal. I'm just talking about like at six o'clock, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going, no excuses. And keeping to your word that you actually are going to go ahead in six and going through with it, it feels fantastic after. When these little things start to slip, like I make a promise, I'm not going to eat this particular way this day, I'm going to eat clean, and then I eat like garbage food, that already you're starting on the downward slope to go ahead and relapse. 
So, and what I mean by relapse is like watch porn, masturbate to it, and and just like feel even more terrible later because you just kind of went for that quick pleasure. It's the same even with foods, you know, like I'm bored and you're not even hungry. You're just like, I just, well, let me just eat this cheesecake. And then you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I ate this cheesecake. Like at the moment, it's like all oh, great and you know, you're tasting it and everything, but you know it's going to be bad for you later. And this is how it is with the pornography and the sex addiction. So self-care is kind of the umbrella that really, really helps uh, to go ahead and combat this. But also being around other like-minded people when these things are coming up is very important as well. I would even like give a tiny little caveat to that because sometimes being around like-minded people with a particular addiction sometimes could be even triggering for me. So I'm not saying that to be around folks like that all the time, it depends on the people too. But uh, if you can just be around a group of folks and they're talking about their this issue and maybe labeling things uh, and then you kind of can relate because you're going through something as well. This is what I wanted to go ahead and share uh, with this particular book. And I do recommend this book if you're going through this issue right here, right now. And like I said, I'm going, I'm still going through this. This is not something that I have a ton of sobriety over, uh, you know, and especially with all this crazy pandemic stuff and everything. And then you just kind of, you know, want to like, act out because you think the world is like just turning to shit, you know. But, uh, you know, when it comes to news and even social media, I really recommend just kind of staying off of it as much as possible because that could be very i know it's very triggering for me you know this like this constant bad news is constant comparing but i've gone on long enough if you've read this book or if you have any thoughts of anything that i said please comment down below you can buy this book i'm going to leave an amazon affiliate link in the description for this video and by buying the book through that link you'll support both the author and myself definitely Thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, please post any of your thoughts and comments. I actually always prefer thought comments because that way we can actually have a conversation. I really prefer that. Then even thumbs up. I mean, that's those are great too, but yeah, that's what it is. Thanks so much for watching.